Well, hey, this is Jerry bringing you another episode of What's Broke Today. That today we're working on a 99 Mustang GT. <clears throat> this car's got like 240,000 miles on it. <clears throat> I got to start out with an apology because my voice isn't good today. And all my footage that I recorded yesterday, I have no idea what I did, but I didn't record any video, even though I thought I did. So, I'm part way through the repair, <clears throat> and what I'm working on is a rear axle, that it come in with a, a noise, and a noise... <clears throat> turned out to be the deferential bearings so I got the whole rear end tore apart <clears throat> now I've already replaced all the bearings I was going back together but I'm going to take a break from working on the car and I'll kind of give you a update on how, on what I did that I started out with the uh, we put up on the jack stands put it in gear and I've got my deal that's like a doctor's stethoscope with the probe on it. And basically what I did was, I went around and I listened on the axle housing out here. I went in and listened on both sides of the deferential housing, kind of right outside the case in there where I'd be listening to the uh, actual carrier bearings. And then I also went down underneath and I listened at the front by the where the drive shaft hooks onto the yoke coming out of the rear end. And I came back here where it gets larger in the area where the rear pinion bearing would be and listened. And you could hear the growling. So when we pulled it apart, and uh, I'll have to find parts here in a little bit. So, but I also had to pull the bearings and show you what I found. Alright, now when it comes to the disassembly of this, the first thing I did was got a 12 point, 12 millimeter wrench and took the we got four of these bolts that are 12 millimeter, 12 point headed to hold the drive shaft to the yoke up on the front of the deferential. Took that off and then went. So when I came to the back pulled the bolts out of the cover and I left the top center one in there and then I took a gasket scraper and a hammer and drove it in between the cover and the deferential so I could pop the silicone loose that's holding the rear cover on. And then once I got that the cover off while the oil was draining, of course I'd already taken the tires and wheels off. Had to pull the brake caliper off. Had to pull the bracket off that bolts to the axle that the caliper goes on. And then that these axles are held in with C-clips that uh, took the rotor off and then was needing to push the axles I was going to have to push them in in order to take the C-clips out of the center but one thing on depend on see this Mustang has ABS sensors so has an E8 headed bolt that's a reverse Torx um, on the back side here that holds the ABS AB holds the ABS sensor in and so took and pushed that the sensor back on both sides which sometimes it's harder to do than it looks because what we ended up doing was actually using the axle and popping the axle in and out to push them back but you could actually probably you know as long as you're careful you know you can't go McGill a gorilla on it but you know like 
you know, you figure you don't want to damage it, so you have to be real gentle and, you know, like here you could use a socket and carefully push it back because where that sensor fits through the hole, you get all kinds of dirt and trash around there. And the other thing, while you got it apart, we want to clean this up real good because I'd already wiped it off, but you know, you have semi metallic brake pads here, and uh, as the brakes wear, um, and uh, through the miles, this is actually magnetic, and stuff had attached to that. And it, it actually looked fuzzy with all the medical or metal particles that was on it. So we cleaned that off and um, that might actually fix his uh, ABS braking issue. So by the time I got all that stuff done, And after I pushed, which picture there's a, the carriers in there, but I'll actually um, show you when I go put this back together. Has the C clips there holding the axles in, and these fit into a groove on the end of the axle that I'll show you later. And then of course this is a limited slip, so it's got a funky spring in there. But uh, when I come back later, I'll be sure to show you what I'm talking about. Because um, in order to pull those C-clips out, I actually had the, this center pin here. This goes through the uh, center of the differential and holds the two of the spider gears. So, but we'll walk through that again later too once I, I get the carrier back in there. But let's go out and take a look at what I found when I was, uh, after I got everything tore apart. Now here we have assortment of the of the bearings that races and stuff that this is the front uh, pinion bearing and this is the only one that it has some wear in here on the bearing surface and was starting to go but this is the only one that when I turned it was smooth because I you know apply pressure and feels good. Now, this is the uh, bearing race for the gear end of the pinion and the inside of it, which may be hard to see, but it's, I mean, it's starting to get grooves in it. So, and that, you know, that really isn't terribly bad. Now, this which uh, you'll notice that where I cut it here, I used uh, oh, I used my three-inch cutoff wheel, and you know the gear is just right. I mean, there there is one tiny small shim that goes in between this and the gear, and I got this at a, a slick angle like this. And cut in that way, you know, fairly deep. And then I straightened it up and cut at an angle across this way. And cut that down real deep. And then I just take my chisel and I laid the it on a two before. Had it on a two before. And I just took this and stuck down in that groove and whacked it with like a pound and a half <clears throat> little mini sledgehammer and it split this race and cracked it <clears throat> across here and then it's real easy to just put this up against the edge here and just start pecking it and go around and this will just start sliding off real easy because that takes all the pressure off but if you look real close down in here, you can see it's rough. I mean, this part of it was definitely creating noise. 
because I mean yeah that surface that metal is just coming apart and of course to get that has which yesterday I had this all together where you could see the rollers inside the cage because of course you've seen you know that at the depth what the bearing looks like well I just went in here and cut this cage <clears throat> and then spread it apart and I adjusted the camera and zoomed out a little because I was having trouble holding things keeping them in the the field of view um, without looking at the screen on the camera <clears throat> but I did the differential side bearings and the uh, gear into the pinion bearing cut these off <clears throat> then when I do we get all our rollers <clears throat> and the rollers which this is probably where I now this part where I zoom in would have been good but if you look real close it's got I mean they're pitted and this is one of the worst ones that you know this one which I'm sure you can't see it in the camera but it's got kind of that orange peel look like paint would and that one's not too bad I guess I should have went through them but yeah here's another one that's oh I, that's one I hit with the grinder but yeah, I mean I had a bunch of the bearings that looked like this that had that all that pitting in it and that pitting is what was making noise and then of course these are the side cups of the bearing races that were in the deferential housing on either side that supported the deferential and even though I don't have any real pitting in here there is noticeable wear and uh, a lot of unevenness and stuff and yeah and I'm looking at the back side because this is the race that was on the right hand side of the car or passenger side this is the one that's on the driver's side and how I know it's it is because of the wear that's on the back side is because the shims that uh, you know shim those that where it goes up in the housing and I'll show you in a little bit you know these go in between the deferential housing and this bearing race to adjust the uh, back or the preload on the uh, bearings and of course this one as you can see my shim is wasted um, the bolts holding this race in the uh, housing was loose so I am it looks like because this was actually probably the worst actual bearing that I took apart and I think this had actually rotated in there because of the damage I had to this shim so I gotta get my micrometer out and um, I gotta figure out a, a new shim for there and then did it, yeah I guess I only brought one but let me see if I can find the other one of these okay so where this was the right hand side uh, bearing the bearing surface I mean has wear but this wasn't too bad but if you put the it together and turned it you could still feel the, a little bit of roughness in this one but this was the driver's side and of course we got the slot and it's easier to cut the ones off the deferential than it is the ones off the pinion gear just because you know there's a where this is slid up on the carrier there's actually a gap here where you can have more room so you don't have to worry about hitting anything and hurting it but did the same thing I cut my groove 
throw my chisel down in it and split it and uh, then it comes off easy but see this one we got all kinds of funky spots there's I mean a uh, it almost looks like you'd hammered a, one of the bearings there and then from here clear around to there I mean that's pretty rough so and then there's another real bad spot but this was probably the majority of his noise that he was hearing so and then once to put the new ones in I just went to my shop press I I cleaned everything up and like when I was grinding on the deferential I actually took a rag folded it in half and covered it so and try and keep my stuff where I was grinding from getting down into the uh, spider gears and down in the center of the deferential where I didn't take it apart so I used a rag to protect that and then I cleaned everything good with brake clean and then I took my new bearing and I put the carrier in my press and then just set this on top or the new bearing on top <clears throat> and then I actually have a socket that's the right size to set on here and I can press it down on and when I get to the very end of say the new bearing going on I take one of these old races and wipe it off I set it on there cause, and finish pressing it the rest of the way because the carrier sticks, um, you know, this goes down far enough that the carrier end of that nub is sticking up. And I did one side, flipped it over, <coughs> did the same thing on the other side. And then when I went to put the pinion bearing on, I took in the... Sh since I wasn't changing gears, I just put the same shim back on. I just transferred it from, or you know, basically left it on the pinion after I wiped everything off and pressed the new bearing on. And I, I put it in the press with my separator plates, those big square plates. Find the slot or the cutout that matches my diameter real close. And then basically I, I slide the new bearing up on, then I turn this around backwards so that they look kind of like that. And then set it down in there and then just start and press it down through. And we always want to look and make sure when we're going on, we're going on straight. Because if it starts to get a little cockeyed one way or the other, um, you could actually damage the new bearing. So... But yeah, I'll say, so I've already got all that done and of course got the pinions already back in. I'm going to find my micrometer and uh, get my shim figured out. Then we're going to go back to rear end reassembly. Now, um, we're talking about finding my new shim or, you know, changing these out. And as we know it, it's, we got wear on here and we've got wear on here. But in here, where we don't have wear, and in the center of that where we don't have wear, I put those together. And then I take my micrometer, which I can hold it. I open up the micrometer, turn it down, and I measure in here where it hadn't been... Uh, where there wasn't no wear and I look and see where I'm at and then basically I, I take this came in the bearing kit new shims basically I just take it and putting them together and measuring them to the same thickness as the old ones where there wasn't any wear. All right, after I got all the bearings swapped on the deferential and on the pinion, I used a, uh, a punch and a big hammer, and I went from the back side of the rear end and hit the race. 
Okay, when I got ready to start going back together, first thing I did was I had to get the races that were in the housing for the pinion out. So I went from the back side, and when you look up through there, you can see the lip of this race from the back side. And I took my punch and just alternately hit left and right. Hit it, you know, take three or four swacks with my, uh, and this uh, thing, I was pound and a half or two pound little mini sledge and hit it and worked this thing out. And as it did, it actually pushed the bearing and the seal out the front. And uh, then after that was out, I turned around and went from the drive shaft side and in the housing for the, the big uh, bearing, there's little cutouts on the left and the right for your punch to hit this race to drive it out. So then I knocked the rear one out and then we took and cleaned the housing real good to try and get all the metal shavings and old oil out. You know, hosed her down with brake clean really good. And then putting in the new races, I've got one of these kits that has all of the different size, uh, you know, for different size bearings because I've used this on trailer stuff. But you find your one of these that fits your bearing race. I'm going to have to wipe these off because I quit working yesterday because it started raining. But, you know, where even though I, this is a side for the carrier, I don't have to drive this in. But I find the one of these that fits my race so that this lip on this is hitting the outer lip here. And then it goes in this little handle. And I just, I drove the, you know, went from the back, which this has a sway bar, so it's kind of hard, but I was able to reach up there and get that up there and kind of get my fingers in there and whack it with the hammer and drive the big race in on the rear side of the deferential and then flipped around, drove the race in from the front. And then after I had that drove in, I needed to put in, I took the, the big, the bearing that goes on the front of the pinion and the seal. I put some grease in the lip of the seal and I take my biggest one of these and put it on here backwards. And then basically I stick the bearing up in there and then there's this other funny looking little washer. It's called an oil slinger. It goes in between the bearing and the seal and it'll work without it but you should put it in and I just put it up there and drive the seal all the way in and then I go from the back side and take my pinion and on the pinion the, this is a crush sleeve it goes in between the pinion and the front bearing on the drive shaft side and these, when you put them together, and you first tighten it down and get the nut snug on the, you know, because you put the pinion in from the back, put the yoke on in the front, put the new nut on, and then I just run it down with the impact till it touches and gets somewhat tight. And it's got, when it hits this, I mean, this, when it was new, was probably about a sixteenth of an inch wider than it is now. And I made a tool, and this is a piece of three-eighths inch thick by about an inch and a quarter wide bar stock. I drilled two holes in it and then kind of ground it out here because there's a lip on that uh, yoke that needs to clear and I used two of the drive shaft bolts and bolted this up and then this sets on the ground while I take a breaker bar a three foot cheater bar and uh, put it on that nut on that yoke 
and slowly um, tighten that up because when you you first get it where you think it's tight um, and you grab that that yoke it, it wobbles because the bearings aren't tight and that's what the crush sleeve is you've got to crush it down and tighten it up to take up the gap and like I say we got to crush this about a sixteenth of an inch so I would take and tighten it a little bit and I could just take my bar and feel if I still had wobble in it or not and then when I got down to where I didn't feel any wobble I gave it a little more of a turn you got to check the preload so I've got this uh, it's an inch pounds torque wrench that has a dial on it and I looked up the preload on the pinion bearing and it was if you had used bearings it's like 8 to 14 inch pounds if you had new bearings it was 16 to 28 so I set this on 15 and then I took everything off turned the yoke a few turns you know to make sure I got the bearings seated in good and I put this on and as I as I turn it and put the stress on it the needle moves well when I first started I was only moving it beyond maybe five inch pounds so I just tighten it up a little bit more take everything apart and then recheck it and I stopped when I had you know about 18 19 or so that I took my 15 and went almost you know five pounds past just a little bit shy of that is in between probably 17 and a half and 20 and called that good and then once we got that done now it's time to put the uh, carrier back in and now we're getting to a part of this that is probably not the funnest or the easiest because I've got to get this now up in the hole and it's heavy so I'm going to start out by I'm going to make sure there's no dirt or anything on my bearing race and set one on now I'll pick this up and actually get it up over the uh, sway bar and then I'll stick the other one on and then I'm going to kind of let that roll up there and ride and then I'm going to take the shims that go on the driver's side and go ahead and get them in there or try to <laughs> like I said this is not the easiest part of the job but you can get them up in there and then Try, try and have everything ready and wiped off before you stuff that up there. But I wiped it off once and I'll wipe it off again. Now these caps, pay attention to left and right because it does matter. And like on this one, um, the arrows that are on the back of the cap point toward the wheel. So... And of course when I took them off, I laid them on the side where they belonged. Now I'm going to start those bolts, get them in there a little ways, wipe my hands again, and then I put my new shims on the driver's side. I'm reusing the ones that were on the passenger side. And basically I'm going to, uh, if I can, it's easier said than done. Need to lift the carrier up, push that bearing race in. Now I got to get these started in there. And they make a tool to drive those in. But me being the not wanting to spend that kind of money person. Because it's not like I'm doing this every week or every day. 
I'm going to take the bearing cap. I got my bearing cap wiped off. And then I'm going to very carefully peck on those with my hammer. And when I get in so far, I'm going to take my bearing cap and set up there and very carefully and of course if you wanted to take out a couple bolts and get the sway bar out of the way it would make this easier that ain't working so Yeah, that just is. That is way too tight. So I'm going to pop that back out and take a break from filming. All right. Well, what had me hung up here was the fact that I put that all the way in. I actually put in too far. And I, when I pulled it back, then I could drive these shims the rest of the way in. And get them lined up with the bearing and I put the bearing cap on and slowly tighten left and right you know tighten them evenly till I pull it up tight and then of course I got my free play in there now and then you reach up here and turn everything and we're which when I looked it up uh, called for a uh, four thousandths of an inch so I got my dial indicator and I'm gonna get this assembled real quick and then of course the dial indicator I got either got this goofy c-clamp thing I can mount it with and then screw a pin in you know either side or on the end but since I'm dealing with the deferential I'm gonna use the uh, basically the magnetic mount where we can stick this on here and I can line up this the gauge on the tooth of the gear or one of the teeth of the gear and then tighten it down And then I might have my head in the way, but line that up and then go all one way. And I'll have my head in the way because I got to see the gauge. All right. And I got. I'm going to say five thousandths of an inch of movement, which a little bit over what we want, but boy, trying to adjust shims and get rid of a thousandths of an inch um, might be a challenge. Now, the other little thing that I forgot to, even though I tightened the uh, these bolts up to hold the carrier in. I, I checked my um, backlash, but then I still need to torque them down. And the sheet said 90 to 100 foot pounds, so I uh, would get out and get that done. You get your workout torquing things down. Now another thing we was gonna do while we was here working on it, had the axles out. Looks like the axle seals have been weeping just a little bit of oil. So here we just while we was here, we just go ahead and change them.
I got this little hook tool that's made. I, oh, this is a Mac Tools. But hooks in there, and then we can pop the seals out and wipe the inside of that out. And then the bearings still look good, so the owner said leave them and just put in the seals. And Of course, before I drive the seals in, I'm going to take and put a little bit of grease on the inside of the lip of the seal. Then that will help lubricate the seal so the axle doesn't, you know, basically wear the seal out. So we put a little grease in there, then I'll use the same old tool I used earlier for driving things and we'll drive that in and then I cleaned up my sensor then also I took a wire wheel and cleaned up the reluctor wheels on the axle and then while I'm here, I'll go ahead and stick this axle in. Push it in as far as it'll go. I'm going to go do the seal on the other side. Now I'll meet you back at the center of the deferential. Now I got both axles put in. If you look up in there, you can see the splines of the axles. And then there's a little groove in the end of the axles. Well, that's where I'm going to stick those C-clips. I got my new C-clips and I'm going to stick them on my magnet and stick it up in there and then come out here to the outside and slide the axle out I get the C-clip in it and then I'm going to pull the axle out and that's going to pull the C-clip up into the uh, uh, outer spider gear, which is what's going to lock the C clip in. And right now, I, I got them pushed, the axle's pushed in actually a little too far. But as I pull them out, I can get my C clip in there and slide them out. And then the C clips are lodged up in there. So, we're good to go there. And then I'll reach up here, turn the differential, and on one side, there's a hole for a bolt, and then our pin has a hole in it. When this goes through the side gears, or the spider gears that are uh, in there and we're going to push that up through and then put our that bolt through and that's what holds the pin in and when I took the axles out we just reverse that procedure so basically I take this bolt out, then I take the pin out, I take the um, ABS sensors, the, loosen the bolts on them, and then uh, that got the, so I get the sensors out of the way, and then uh, I uh, push the axles in, then I can remove those clips. Well, what I normally do isn't working real good, so let's do this a little different. Let's we'll use the carrier because we got to make sure this bolt's tight. And I'm sure there's a torque spec for it, but I didn't look it up. But we need it tight without being, you know, you can't overdo it. But 
so now we got her all back together um, I'm gonna get the cover silicone and put it back on I'm gonna reattach the drive shaft fill it with oil um, put the brakes back together and uh, take her for a drive well hey there I got the uh, Mustang all wrapped up uh, like I say, got the brakes back on, the uh, rear cover on, filled with fluid, um, wheels back on it, took her for a little drive, everything sounded, I mean, night and day difference, that uh, all worked out good, that I appreciate you watching, that uh, always like those thumbs up for the likes, and uh, always enjoying having new subscribers, so if you're liking what you're seeing, subscribe because there's no telling what else you're going to see on what's broke today. Thank you.